Greetings. We, are the Guardian. Welcome to Night Vision. Hey friend, do you mind if I ask you a question? Are you born again? Have you given your heart back to God? You see I am convinced that we are all born believers. The ancient writings declare that we are all given a measure of faith, and I believe that happens at conception. Then, some go on to nurture that faith, while others starve it. And unfortunately, if you starve your faith long enough, it will die on the vine. So I guess the main question is, are you a nurturer, or a starver? Some people were blessed to be born in a believing home with parents that taught them truth and reality. Others weren't so lucky. But either way, 90% of the children in America, are then forced to endure the indoctrination of the public school system. The other 10% were homeschooled, and were probably taught factual data, rather than atheistic propaganda. Whenever I talk to an atheist, I will ask them what caused them to lose their faith, and it usually comes down to public school science classes. It's ironic that we think we are doing the right thing by sending our kids to public school, because we are told that it's what's best for our kids. And let's face it, with today's economy, who can afford to stay home with the kids and homeschool? But sending your kids off to the government-controlled public school indoctrination machine, is actually the worst thing a parent can do to their kids. If you have no other options, you must thoroughly deprogram your kids daily, especially on the topic of science. That's where they start shoving the atheistic worldview of naturalism down their throats. That's where they focus their indoctrination. Sure they'll lead them astray in other classes like social studies and sex education, but that usually comes later in middle and high school. But they start teaching them the religion of atheism, from first grade on. But they don't call it religion, or atheism, they aren't that stupid. They call it naturalism. Naturalism is the atheistic worldview that all things are natural. So obviously if all things are natural, there is nothing that is supernatural. This is their underhanded way of saying, God does not exist. But if atheism is a religion, and naturalism is their doctrine, how do they get away with teaching anti-Christian theology, in a school system that is supposed to be void of religion? It is all done under the guise of science. It's quite nefarious, and literally diabolical. So what are the specifics of naturalism? How do they teach atheism, right before your very eyes? Well it usually centers around the topic of origins. Origins is simply the study of beginnings. And in science, the three main origins are, number one, the origin of the universe, number two, the origin of life on earth, and number three, the origin of humanity, homo sapiens sapiens. According to the atheist theology of naturalism, it all happened by itself. The universe created itself, from a singularity, generated by the multiverse. They call that little fairy tale, the Big Bang. Life on Earth, created itself, from non-living chemicals. They call that little fairy tale, abiogenesis. And lastly, human beings, evolved from bacteria. They call that little fairy tale, Darwinian evolution. Obviously because these three fables are taught to our kids as indisputable fact, surely they must have mountains of evidence to back up their propaganda, right? Sorry my friend, their supply of evidence is like old Mother Hubbard, their cupboards are bare. That can't possibly be true, can it? Surely they are not teaching our kids their theology of atheism, without providing any evidence, right? I hate to tell you this, but they not only manufacture evidence from thin air, they even manipulate the evidence, by spinning the facts in their favor. There is no evidence, for or against, the Big Bang or abiogenesis, other than the literal impossibility of either event. Even though, science is supposed to be observable, repeatable, and verifiable, neither the Big Bang, or abiogenesis, has been observed, repeated, or verified. But Darwinian evolution is in a bit of a different category, because it is supposedly both an ancient, and current event. The cop-out on the lack of evidence for the Big Bang and abiogenesis, 
is that it happened billions of years ago. Whatever. But they cannot use that argument with Darwinian evolution. Even though they insist that the process started billions of years ago, unlike the Big Bang and abiogenesis, it is a contemporary event. In other words, it is an ongoing process that is still happening as we speak. So this is where they stoop to manipulating the data. If the atheistic theology of Darwinian evolution is true and accurate, then they should be able to easily document the process, from the fossil record. According to their doctrine of naturalism, the process of Darwinian evolution starts with the impossibility of abiogenesis, life starting on Earth, all by itself, from non-living chemicals. Once you achieve that impossibility, they move on to the next impossibility, that original life form, must somehow evolve into human beings. So we start with bacteria, and then the slow gradual consistent process of evolution begins. But is that what the fossil record reveals? Quite the contrary. The fossil record shows explosions of life, followed by minor adaptation of the species to their environment, then extinction. Explosions, adaptation, extinction. The most well-known explosion of life is called the Cambrian explosion. Thousands of new species burst onto the scene, with absolutely no evolutionary ancestors of any kind. But many evolutionists try to insinuate that the Cambrian explosion was an exception. That is an outright deception. The fossil record quite accurately reveals the biblical process of life on Earth, it's called, creation. God created the universe 14 billion years ago. He created Earth, about 4.5 billion years ago. He started creating life, in the oceans, about 3.5 billion years ago. The creation process started with bacteria, then crustaceans, then vertebrates, amphibians, reptiles, and then mammals. God culminated the creation process with his crowning achievement, mankind, whom he created in his own image, by giving us an eternal spirit. There is absolutely no evidence whatsoever to back up the atheistic fairy tales of naturalism. In reality, all the evidence is in favor of creationism, in favor, of the creator. And that my friend is a fact. That, is the truth. Peace be unto you and your house. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He even created you. Come back to God my friend. He loves you, and he misses you, and he proved that on the cross. He waits for you, with open arms. Do not delay my friend, for the time, grows short.